Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another daily practice tip for you. And today I'm going to be talking about articulation and specifically building up our speed of articulation. This was a great request from one of our viewers, so thank you very much for that. So, building up speed in articulation. In other words, tonguing articulating faster. How does this happen? Well, surprise, surprise, there's no quick and easy trick where all of a sudden you do one thing and you can add, you know, 50 or 100 beats per minute to your articulation does not exist. Like so many other things we do, it's something that takes time and practice. But there are certain things that we can pay attention to to make sure that we're not making this process more difficult. So, First off, when we think about articulation, and we talked about this in another video as well, many of us think of articulation in terms of syllables, different sounds that we make with the tongue, with the air, that create different shapes to the sound, such as to, do, tho, no. These are all ways that we can change the front sometimes middle and end of the note, especially the front of the note there. And so when we're thinking about articulation, we're still gonna be using these different syllables, to, do, tho, to an extent, you know, working on our speed, whatever articulation we're using is going to be beneficial with all of this. And as we're working on building up our speed, a lot of it is just not only training our tongue how to move at a certain speed with clarity and with evenness in the tempo, but some of it's actually building up the musculature as well. Sometimes, sometimes we're asking our tongue to do especially repetitive movements that it's not used to. So some of this may take time here. But with this whole syllable idea, when we're thinking, of, so for example, when we say toe like this, we have the front, the t part, where everything stays mostly in place. But when we're speaking toe, you see how the jaw drops, to, do, tho. We get that big open O shape there. Now, the problem is when we are playing our branched instrument, if we're moving our jaw that much, to, what happens is we're disrupting the aperture shape here. So we're changing the shape and all of a sudden that means that a, the sound is going to be changing. It's not going to be in the same kind of control because the armature is actually changing shape. And it means that it's going to be a lot more difficult to get things back to shape before we play the next note here. So, for example, if I just take my mouthpiece, if I try to do... If I try to really open up my armature, my drop my jaw for every single one toe, Boy, I just feel like my control is all over the place. The sound is changing. I have a difficult time getting the next note to respond. So when we are articulating while we want to think about that syllable, to, to, we want to, to a large extent, keep the jaw in place. To, to, do, do. My graduate school professor talked about this as keeping the tongue within the mouth. In other words, not letting what the tongue is doing affecting the rest of the face here. To, to, to. A really great way we can pay attention to this is to catch ourselves if we are starting to do a lot of do, do, like that, is to put our finger right on our chin here. So if you try talking like this, you can feel it moving all over the place. But when we're trying to articulate, use these syllables, to, to, do, do, tho, tho, no, no. Really try to make sure we're keeping things in place as much as possible. So that's number one, making sure we're not changing the shape of the armature. Number two, comes back to our most favorite thing in the world, the thing that I say has the most to do with brass playing and has the most to do with problems we have with our brass playing, specifically air. So we talked about before when we are talking about articulations about how the tongue, the articulation does not start the note, right? Toe is not getting that sound to happen. All that's doing, toe is serving as a way for us to shape the sound that's already there. And how do we get that sound to initiate? With that airflow, right? So often when we're, especially we're trying to work on building up our speed with our articulation or trying to work on clarity with articulation, if we forget to keep that airflow moving through, 
what's going to happen is we're not going to get that start to the note to play though the way that we want. It's going to, it's going to have a hesitation. It's going to struggle. The tongue is going to get in the way of actually getting the note to start. And then what happens? Then we start getting frustrated and our first reaction is to start articulation, start articulating harder. Well, I must have to do tuh. I must have to do more of that to get the sound to start. And then all that's doing is just stopping the airflow more. So we actually want to come from the other direction. We want to start off thinking about that airflow and using, again, like I said before, using just as much tongue as we need to shape the note and no more than that. So Thinking about these ideas, what exercises can we do to work on the articulation speed? Again, so much of this is about repetitiveness and slowly building up our speed. So for example, we can take something like our scales. I love scales for working on this kind of concept. Initially, we can take a B flat major scale here and I'll turn on my handy dandy metronome here to 60 beats per minute. And what we are going to do is I'm just going to play 16th notes here. And what I'm going to think about is just the air, keeping my tongue within my mouth, not moving my jaw so much and just thinking to, 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 like that. So it should sound like. And as always, anytime we are trying to build up our speed, whether it's with technique, articulation, whatever it might be, always making sure that it's staying even and secure. If we're getting if the speed is changing or we're not getting the same sound to every single note, then we don't want to be getting faster. We want to, if anything, get a little bit slower to make sure that we can keep everything perfectly lined up. Once that happens, then we can start bumping up that metronome, starting to play a little bit faster and a little bit faster, taking a little bit every day. You know, a lot of folks, there's a really, really great story about um, the great trombone soloist Christian Lindbergh working on his um, recording of The Flight of the Bumblebee, which is considered one of the seminal trombone classical recordings. It's amazingly clear. The way he did that is he, he spent a year working on this and he slowly bumped up the tempo a lot of times, like, like one beat per minute every day working on this. So by the time he got to the recording, he was so solid and secure, he could play it all day long. Making sure that we're taking the time to have that clarity and that evenness and that security before we're getting faster is going to play huge dividends. And so this is something I would encourage you to add to your daily practice routine. You can take your scales and whatever scales you're working on the day, it can be our scale of the week. It can be different scales, modes, or anything else you're working on. Or if you have technical etudes you're working on, thinking about this concept and remembering, as always for us, it's all about that airflow and how we're working with that, not with what we're doing affecting the airflow the other way around here. So as always, I hope you enjoy the video here. If you have other tips that you'd like me to talk about, other concepts you'd like me to address, please feel free to comment on that here in the video or send those to me at tromboneshop at schmidtmusic.com. And again, happy practicing and please keep making music.